Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, the Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please. Our first reading is from Ezekiel. You mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die. And you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways. The wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's read together Psalm 119, found in your insert. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with all my heart. Make me go in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. Give me light in your ways. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which you will make to those who fear you. Turn away from the reproach I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. In your righteousness, preserve my life. Our second reading is from Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. 
Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, If another member of the church sins against you, Go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of the two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, Let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Matthew's Gospel reading is from chapter 18, known as the Church Discourse. It focuses on matters related to how the community of Christ, followers and disciples, are to live and work together as witnesses of God's grace and the presence of God's kingdom. Jesus' teaching is prompted by Peter's question. Peter asks, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus placed a child before them and said very clearly, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Children had no status and were dependent on others for their care and nurturing. As children of God, we are dependent upon God, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Saint Sustainer. Jesus is saying the kingdom of heaven is not about being the greatest, but being the least. Not being the first, but being the last. It takes humility to become like a child. And when such a child is welcomed in Jesus' name, so is Jesus welcomed. Jesus then addresses the need, the importance of seeking out when one of the members is lost. It is the parable of the lost sheep. A man has a hundred sheep and one wanders away. He leaves the ninety-nine behind to search for the one that is lost. Jesus says, 
I tell you the truth. He is happier about the one sheep than about the 99 that did not wander off. It takes compassion to experience the joy of being whole again. All are equal in the eyes of God. We are all God's beloved. Today's reading is the third teaching, how to confront a member who has sinned against another. First, point out the fault to the one who has sinned against you. If that person hears you and acknowledges the wrong, healing can begin. If not, then take one or two others with you who can be witnesses to the conversation. If again the member refuses to listen, tell it to the church. Reconciliation is sometimes a process and can involve the church as a whole. If the sinner refuses to listen to the words of the church, let the one who sinned and refused repentance and reconciliation be treated like a Gentile and a tax collector who is considered outcasts by the people. It's interesting how your perception of scripture changes over time as to hear Jesus tell them, and I'm going off a bit, but please bear with me. Um, Jesus said to treat them like a Gentile or tax collector. And I want to say, Jesus, you called Matthew, who was a tax collector, you ate with tax collectors and sinners because people complained. People were critical of you because you ate with tax collectors and sinners. And Gentiles, you started coming into their territory and teaching, and they too began to follow you. So I guess I'm in the state of mind where why would Jesus say treat them like a Gentile or tax collector, unless Jesus knows how sometimes we treat people. <laughs> you know, if somebody sins against us, how do we treat them? And we do consider them outcasts. So Jesus did forgive. <laughs> Jesus did welcome all even those who were considered outcasts, who were considered sinners, tax collectors, Gentiles, women, were always welcome. So maybe Jesus is wanting us to follow his example. But Jesus' promise in this gospel reading is, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For when two or three are gathered in my name, I am among them. We, in our human weakness, need God's grace and mercy. To do what God asks of us when we are open in prayer, to God's will. Next Sunday, when you have morning prayer, you will hear the last teaching of the church discourse. Peter asked Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Not seven, Jesus says but I tell you 77 times. And Jesus goes on to tell this parable of the wicked slave, the unmerciful slave. 
A king is settling his accounts with the slaves, his slaves. One is brought before him who owes 10,000 talents. The slave is not able to pay, so the king orders him and his family to be sold, everything he has to pay back the king. The slave begged for patience and promised that he would pay his debt. So the king agrees and he leaves. And as soon as he gets outside, he follow, he finds a fellow um, slave who owes him money. And he demands payment right there and then. Perhaps he thinks it will help him pay off the king. But his servant, his fellow slave, begs for forgiveness, begs for patience, begs for mercy. But the wicked slave, who had been forgiven, puts his fellow slave into prison because he cannot pay his debt. Fellow slaves become aware of the mistreatment and reports it to the king. The king calls the wicked slave for whom he had canceled the debt and rebukes him, saying, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? The church is only used two times in the Gospels, and it is found in Matthew that you heard today. And Jesus, for the teaching, for the church, his Jesus' teaching is about humility, about having compassion, about reconciliation among its members, about forgiveness of our sins, for we all sin against God. It is about how we are to live in the kingdom of heaven and how we are to be the church. I have a meditation from Bishop Stephen Charleston. I know I don't want you to get tired hearing from him. I think he is full of wisdom. So when I find something that I want to share, it's because it has helped me. Living in community is an earned blessing. It does not just happen. Communities are formed when people recognize that they share a common vision and move toward one another to see that vision more clearly. Community is maintained when people have the integrity to be honest, patient, accountable, and forgiving with one another. Spiritual community does not require every member believes the same thing. It does require that what they believe allows them to respect and work with those who believe differently. Community is love made visible by intention. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God for God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of me, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right.
the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers for the people is found on page 385 of the Book of Common Prayer, Form 2. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Mary, our priest, Jessica and Bob, our wardens, Connie, Deanna, Robin, Sharon, our vestry, and for this gathering in the Anglican cycle of prayer, the Church of Ireland, in our community, all the Burlington area churches, Love, Inc., the Transitional Living Center, the Women's Resource Center, the Diocesan Hospitality Center, and for all ministers and peoples. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people for those in the armed forces, and especially those deployed, Mikey Rain as men. In our parish cycle of prayer, George and Deanna Christman, and Joan, Joan Jane Clothier, for those celebrating a birthday, me. <laughs> Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble, especially Eileen Allen, Yoni Jervis and Anastasia, Jane Clothier, Sue Hollingstead, Wayne Herrick, Sharon Johnson, Cindy Lawrence, Mary Nichols, Jerry Ramos, David Toretta, Mike Winsek, Jimmy Yanni, and Jill Yorn. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially St. John the Divine. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you, you, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have not done them. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with you.